if it were not for you, Jesus. <laughs> oh, glory to my shadow, Yamaha, Sakuramasa. Have you ever wondered where you might be if you had not met Jesus? I've often thought about that. Where would I be if I had never met Jesus? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I think some of you are a little chilly. John, can you adjust all this stuff for us? When we first come in here, it's pretty warm, and so we did it. Johnny, we're going to sing, darling, so don't run away. Sure. Yes. Go ahead. All right. Shirley asked me to make an announcement, and I forgot. And Margie was supposed to remind me, and she forgot. So this is senior night at Bible study. We're all forgetting everything. Nobody told me. Anyhow, she asked me to remind everybody about our ladies fall luncheon that is coming up a week from this coming Saturday on November the 11th. At, it will be at my home in Sun City and we really need you ladies if you haven't already to go over here after church and sign up for it. Uh, it's a potluck so just bring whatever you want something for lunch and if you want to bring a dessert that's you know, both or either or, whatever is comfortable for you to do. But we need to know how many are planning on coming so we can set up enough chairs and tables for everybody. If you have any questions, just ask us after church in the sign-up sheets right over there. Directions to my house and a little flyer you can take home to remind you. Thank you. Thank you, Marvell. I want to just welcome Sister Lynn and work back there. I happen to see her. This must be homecoming night tonight. Brother and sister uh, Young, and uh, who else did I see? And, and our brother here, uh, Bill, visiting with Virgil and Irene tonight. And there he is. Yeah, it's Brother Ralph. How could I miss him? He come hobbling in. I said, what did you do, Brother Ray? Well, he sprained his ankle. He took one step too many. And what a shame he can't wear his boots, but I think those <laughs> shoes look very good. Yes, hallelujah. But it's just good, and it's good to see Karen, and, and uh, we've been missing Karen, and uh, what's his name? Tim. Tim. <laughs> I knew you were going to do that. That's a good one. Senior moment. Senior moment. But it's good to be in the house of the Lord, isn't it? Praise God. I'm glad we can have a good time. Did you know... God has a sense of humor. You know, if you've ever watched monkeys play, you know he's got a sense of humor. Amen? Amen. Well, yeah, yeah, so come on. Come yeah. on here. We're going to sing a song, and then I'm going to sing a song. We're going to sing Beulah Land. Oh. You know, it's close, it's close, it's close, it's close. It's close. It's close. Come on, bring me up. I'm kind of homesick for a country to which I've
love pie. How many love pie? Yeah. Hallelujah. I love it. My favorite. No, that's not my You know, I'm too old to get embarrassed anymore. You know, I really am. Hallelujah. I think I have some words here. I thought I did. Where is it? Well, I guess I don't. So I don't guess I'm going to sing that other song. Yeah, we're on there. Because I don't have the words. I thought I did. Come on. He told I guess me I take don't. It out so there. I can't That's sing that because I don't know it well. He called, told me to take it out. You were going to practice it in the car. Yeah, but I, yeah, I don't know where it's at. It's okay. I don't need to sing another one. That's enough anyway. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I kind of ruined. I kind of ruined the uh, moment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, if y'all don't need to shout, I do. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. You know when Kathy called me or texted me, and I think I called her back told me what was going on and we did pray a bit but I, I wanted her to know that it did me as much good as it did her because I just needed that season of prayer uh, there's one of those times that you don't scream your head off you just kind of talk to Jesus about it uh, you know sometimes we think we got to do it a certain way it just just do it that's what it's all about just doing it sometimes he just wants us to talk to him in a calm voice he's our friend yes, amen. Jesus is our friend amen. that sticks closer than a brother when anybody everybody else forsakes you the psalmist said if my mother and my father forsake me then the Lord will take me up <laughs> hallelujah well I want to speak tonight preach talk whatever you want to call it about the benefits of Calvary I went back and forth today, but this had been in my mind earlier. And the 103rd Psalm is where I want you to turn to in your Bibles tonight. I've got to get this fan on me. It's a bad time of the year. You go in a restaurant and you freeze to death because they've got the air conditioner on in the same way a church if you turn the air on. So you just have to have the benefit of a fan. I do. Psalm 103, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless His holy name. Well, that wasn't enough. The psalmist David said, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits. Now, Sunday night, we ended up in the 24th chapter of Deuteronomy. How many know what that is? Or the 28th chapter, not the 24th. How many know what the 28th chapter of Deuteronomy is? I'll bless you. My blessings will overtake you. Daily. He daily loads us with benefits. Well, I want to just look at this psalm and look at the benefits that He's given us. You know, some people, all they can think about is that they've got a lot of money and got everything they want, and then that's His benefits. Listen, His benefits are bigger than that. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Because you can have all that stuff and not have the peace of God Amen. in your heart that passes understanding right. to where you can lay down at night and go to sleep without worrying about where you're going to end up. If, Listen, before I got saved, I just was afraid to go to sleep. I, listen, I was so healthy, but I felt like I just might die in the middle of the night. And if I did, I was going straight to you know where. <laughs> Hell. That's just say it plainly. Hallelujah. I don't have to start. I noticed in this video I watched that I need to use a Kleenex or a hanky. i got to get me a hanky. <laughs> Hallelujah. But his benefits are out of this world. Amen. They're benefits that are not material. He gives us benefits. We read about it in Deuteronomy. He blesses our 
our cattle. He blesses everything we touch. He blesses us when we go out, when we come in. All of this. God is with us every day. You may not recognize Him. You may not even give Him any attention. But He's with us every day of our lives. Amen. He doesn't leave us. He doesn't forsake us. He said, I'll go with you all the way, even to the end. Now, I think that could be the end of a trial. It could be the end of your life. It could be the end of the world. How many is looking for that? I'm looking for His return. Yeah. Not the end of the world, necessarily, but His imminent return. So He's blessing the Lord. And... Someone in David's shoes, you know, you wonder how he could be so blessed so much into blessing the Lord. How he could be so happy about it when he was running for his life. And the times that he could have killed King Saul, but he was smart enough to know not to do that. Do you know there's people in the world today that's not smart enough not to touch God's anointing? They can say anything they want to about God's anointing, but God is keeping a record. Yeah. So He knows when we touch God's anointing that we're in trouble. And David knew it. And he told Saul, he showed him where he cut off some of his garment, the skirt of his garment, just a little thing off of there, and his conscience smote him just because he had done that. And people today, they have no respect, many people, not y'all, but a lot of people have no respect for the ministry. Right. They don't. They just soon to bless you out in the wrong way as to look at you. But thank God for the people of God that know better than that. But David thanked God for His blessings. And here's what he says. He had forgotten all of His benefits. You see, we have to remind ourselves sometimes. The Bible says, Peter in his epistle, he said, I just, I'm going to store up your pure minds by way of remembrance. Uh -huh. Amen. We have to be, that's all about preaching. We just have to remind you of things that you already know. Right. Yeah. But you have to be reminded because we forget. David said, Don't forget, oh my soul, don't forget his benefits. First of all, he said, He forgives all your iniquities. Oh, yeah. Woo, I'll never forget the night that I laid down in bed and all well with my soul. How I had searched, I told you about it, and longed to know God and I couldn't be in the right place at the right time. But oh, that, I didn't want to go to bed because it was just so wonderful. I thought it was going to be gone in the morning, but it wasn't. But it was so glorious and so, and y'all can relate to that, that I found Jesus as your personal Savior and know that your sin have been washed away. Hallelujah. I've got a secret for you. He doesn't cover our sins. He washes them away. Hallelujah. That's what justification is all about. Just as if we had never sinned. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. Something in my past one time that I was brooding over it and the Holy Ghost as plain as I could speak it. It wasn't audible. But He said, what past? Uh -huh. What past? He forgets it. He forgets our, all those things that we've done even against Him at times. He, he forgives all of our iniquities. Oh, Psalm 32, 1 and 2 says, Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputes not iniquity and whose spirit there is no guile. That is only possible through Calvary. What Jesus did on the cross. That's why I call it the benefits of Calvary. Yeah. David had not experienced what we've experienced having our sins washed away. That was a glorious feeling. The peace of God that came into my life at that moment in time. There were three things I experienced that night. Love, joy, and peace. I, I, I was a, in Sunray, Texas, and I had a few kinsfolk there, but most of the people I didn't know. But you know what? I just wanted to hug everybody. I just was full of love. It's like I just got to hug everybody in this church. And the joy of the Lord, oh my goodness. I was just started wearing high heels. They were about that high. I wouldn't wear them because I was tall. And my husband and I were the same height, so I thought, but I finally decided I'm going to do this. And so I had them on that night at church. And Sister Nancy, I want you to know I did that Holy Ghost dance all over the front of that church. People make fun of it today, you know, and say, well, you don't have to do that. Well, honey, if you ain't tried it, don't knock it. Amen. That's all I can say. Amen. Hallelujah. I love it. 
when the Holy Ghost falls on us and, and we can't help but express it. Jumping yeah. up and down, running, whatever it is yeah. we have to do. You know, we're so nailed to the chairs now. Oh, I'm going to meddle a little bit. Right. We're so nailed to our seats uh, that we're afraid to get up and, and let the Holy Ghost have His way. Amen. Well, somebody might not like it. <laughs> I'll make a fool out of myself. Well, you might. You might. You might. But it'll, it'll do something in you that nothing in this entire world can do. Amen. When your sins are forgiven. You know, when Jesus died on the cross and He cried, it is finished! I don't think he did it. No, what he said with a loud voice, with all the strength he could muster, he cried, "It is finished." And when he did that, the veil in the temple that separated the holy place from the holy of holies, where God dwelt, where the ark of the covenant was, the cherubim said that, and it rent, it tore it in two from the top to the bottom. It tells me one thing: God did it. But at that moment, Jesus, through His death on the cross, through His shed blood, made a way that you and I can walk into the Holy of Holies and know that we have we have audience with the Father. Hallelujah! I can, well, you know, I can just just get up in His lap and and just enjoy being with Him. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Oh. And you see, the Scripture says, back in the Old Testament, Hebrews 9.14, if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifies to the purifying of the flesh, how much more, say more, more. shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered Himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Did you know He's looking for living sacrifices? He's not looking for people that are dried up and dead and you can, God couldn't move them, much less me. <laughs> Hallelujah. But when Jesus, remember in the, the garden there when, when uh, Mary recognized it was Jesus there? She was asking, she, she thought He was the gardener. And, and she looked around and, was, and he said, don't touch me because I've not yet ascended to the Father. Between that time and when he appeared to the disciples on the first day of the week, he went to the Father and presented his body a living sacrifice. For he shed his body. He, he laid it down, I believe, on God's mercy seat. It says, here, I paid, this, I paid the price. And then he comes back and of course... He told Thomas, feel at my side, look at my hands, feel it, for the nail prints were in my hands. But he did it once and for all. We don't have to kill goats and bulls. Aren't you glad? Yeah. You talk about something being bloody. Could you even imagine? You know, we think of all this stuff as something beautiful and wonderful. I can imagine there was a stench Amen. around that altar where they killed those bulls animals and made sacrifices for the sins of the people. Now the high priest could only go in there once a year and pushing the sins of people ahead for a year. But oh, Jesus entered into that place, into the holy, and, and He sacrificed and once and for all, He doesn't have to keep going back because He did it once and for all. And through His blood, as, as the psalmist said, He's forgiven all of our iniquities. Hallelujah. That's not all. He heals yes. all our diseases. Yes. Now Virgil's really struggling with this. And I remember when I first got the Holy Ghost, I thought, why aren't we seeing people healed like they did in Bible days? When the shadow of Peter passing by, they put people in his, in his shadow and, and they were healed. I don't know. I can't answer that. I remember Catherine Coleman. Uh, I've heard her say when she was on television that one of the things she was going to ask God was, why isn't everybody healed? I remember Oral Roberts saying one time, this man was in the prayer line for healing. and He said, what are you going to do when God heals you? He said, I'm going to go out and dance all night. He said, you just go on by. Yep. 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 
Amen. It's like the woman who was taken in the drawer. He said, go and sin no more. Yes. Hallelujah. You know, I like when it talks about uh, Saul of Tarsus and, and, and said, go to the street called Straight. Yes. When we get born again, we go on Straight Street. You know, they love to talk about the love of God and the grace. And yes, yeah, she has, has. I thank God for His grace. I learned a lot over my years about the grace of God. And I like a plaque I had one time said, The will of God will never lead you where the grace of God cannot keep you. And that's the truth. Hallelujah. But if He heals our diseases. We've heard testimonies to that. Now I know that some of them went through doctors, but some of them didn't. And God just, Joe said he's healed. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And, and the doctors, I, have you been back to the doctor yet? The doctor's going to see it. He's going to verify it. Hallelujah. But God, I mean, even a man that we heard this past week up at North Valley had cancer in his mouth and they had to take out the roof of his mouth, but they made him a roof for his mouth and they didn't think he would ever be able to speak or talk again to... to be understood and his voice is gorgeous and beautiful and I guess uh, another night he turned around he took that he put his back to the people took it out and let them see what it was like without that thing in his mouth so he knew and they wanted to do a doc documentary he said on one condition he said I want to give God glory he said I know that you are you know you're expert in what you do but you know sometimes doctors forget about the God factor my husband, he had his second cataract out. It was so bad, the doctor couldn't even, the light wouldn't even shine through it. And he told my husband, well, it's probably going to take a couple of three weeks for your eye to wake up. He walks into the living room the next morning. He said, I can see as good out of that eye as I can the other one. I said, he didn't know about the God factor. Right. Hallelujah. We've got to remember that. Yes, we go through things and I don't understand it. You know, we lost a daughter-in-law to cancer. Five years she fought it. I don't know. I don't understand all about that. But one thing I do know, I know where she is today. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. I tell you, the Bible says it's better to enter into heaven a man than into hell whole. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. So, you know, it's in God's hands. It's in God's hands. Amen? There's nothing we can... He heals all of our diseases. In Exodus... God said, if you diligently hearken, he's talking to the Israelites, to the voice of the Lord your God, and you will do what is right in His sight, will give ear to His commandments and keep all of His statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon you which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Amen. Think about it. Forty years. Never got sick. Never wore out their shoes. Never wore out their clothes. That'd be a wonderful experience. Well, us ladies, we get tired of the ones we got. We gotta have a change of clothes once in a while. To our husband's dismay. It's just the way it is. Just the way it is. Don't say that, Reggie. Isaiah, looking toward uh By his stripes, you're healed. But Peter looking back at the cross, Isaiah was looking forward to the cross. Right. By the stripes he takes on his back, you're healed. But Peter said, by his stripes, you were healed. Right. Why can't we take hold of it? I don't know. But I do know that it's in the atoning work that Jesus did when he went to the cross. Right. Amen. Healing is in the atonement the same as being saved. I don't know if we could just accept healing like we do salvation. I didn't doubt that God would hear me once I got in the right place at the right time. He heard my cry. He's the same God. Jesus bore it all. He took it all. That's one of His benefits. And let's try to take hold of it. Say, God, I want to walk in health and strength. Yeah. You know, you can, as we get older, you can kind of give way to your feelings. You know how you feel. But you shake yourself. Say, my healer. My healer is with me. Hallelujah. By the way, I had tests run on my heart. 
and I don't have any problems with my heart, I'm just out of shape. <laughs> he said, you've got to walk. Well, I got out and walked about 10 minutes today, and that's about all I could do, so I'm going to have to work up to it because of this back I have, but I'm, I'm here. Let's raise our hands and say, I am here. I, to yourself, I am here. Hallelujah. Make a statement, declaration of faith. Then he goes on to say, not only does he heal all of our diseases. See, he said all of them. Not just some of them. He heals all your diseases and he redeems your life from destruction. Did you know human nature is just to destroy themselves? Yes, they drink, they smoke, they do everything they can. When they're young, they think they're indestructible. And then they end up with lung cancer and cirrhosis of the liver and all of those things. But when we have Jesus, we don't need all of that. Hallelujah. We got a man and a woman, a man back there that was an alcoholic, and God just set him free. How many years ago? Many years ago. God did it. 41 years ago. God did it. And he's still living for Jesus. Hallelujah. He was on the brink of, I think, divorce before it happened, but God did it. Hallelujah. How many times could we be destroyed? Come on. You know, we have to be careful because sometimes we'll just stick anything in our bodies and then wonder why we're so sick. I guess I'm going to have to get down to a bland diet as much as I hate to think about it because my stomach is just crazy. But I am healed. I am healed! Because He said so. He said so. Hallelujah. He redeems my life from destruction. Job said, I know my Redeemer liveth, and that He shall st stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though, my, after, though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold, and not another, though my reins be consumed within me. But guess what? God, Job's Redeemer came on the scene. He didn't die like he's talking about here. The Redeemer stepped in and restored him, healed him, and raised him up and let him pray for all those good, fair weather friends that he had. You have to, you, you, you had to sin, Job. I mean, there was a man, we were pretty good friends, and we answered the call to preach at the same time in Wilcox, and, and I'm telling you, everything had to do with healing with him. And if you had sin in your, if you were not healed, it's because there's sin in your life. That is erroneous. That is not true. Right. Amen. We're human. We subject our. God only knows what we're subjecting ourselves to. What we eat every day. Right. And, you know, I just listened on the news, and it was talking about some of this meat in these restaurants are full of antibiotics. Oh, yeah. Because they do that to make them grow bigger. There was a guy came in the. The youth center that we had at Wilcox, he was a, some kind of a chemist, and, and he said they're just pumping. The, the Why people are getting so big in America is because we're getting all of those steroids that they're putting in the animals to make them grow fast and grow big. Right. So you better pray over your food every time you put it in. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'll pray over my food in a restaurant as fast as I will at home. Yeah. Because I don't know what they're doing with it in the restaurant. I'm hoping they're doing it well. Yeah. Yeah. But you never know. You never know. But He redeems us. We're, we, actually, we are destined for destruction in, in the natural. Broad is the way that leads to, to destruction, to death. Wide is the gate. And many are going in there. But there's an answer. There is a Redeemer. Yes. I know my Redeemer liveth. Yes. Let the redeem of the Lord say so. Hallelujah. Praise God. Matthew Jesus, the Son of Man, came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give His life a ransom for many. We were, we were sold out to sin. Born in sin, shapen in iniquity. 
But the Redeemer came on the scene and He ransomed us from the clutches of the enemy. He's still doing it. I said, He's still doing it. Hallelujah. A thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that you might have life, that you might have it more abundantly. Hallelujah. You know what people think about that? Well, my life's not very abundant. Uh, you know, look at this old clunker I'm driving. Blah, 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 blah. And there's a message I preach on that. The fact that we're born again. The fact that we're on our way to heaven. Yes. That's abundant life. Yes. It's not the things that we... Well, I just read in the Scriptures. A man's life does not consist in the abundance of the things which he owns. Right. Which yeah. he possesses. The life we have... Look around. Look at the, the famous people. They're the most unhappy people yeah. on the earth. They have everything they can ever want at their fingertips. And yet they're not happy. Yeah. They drink. They marry and give it in marriage and divorce and marry and divorce. They're never happy. I don't want that life. Amen. No. My brother one time, one of my brothers, my younger brother, well, said, Shirley, why don't you record a, a country album and then you could make all the Christian albums, you know, you could pay for them. And I just, I just looked at him like, I said, Wesley, I can't do that. No, I would not desecrate my temple. And besides all that, people don't understand. If you go into the secular music scene, you do what they say. You have no control over what you do. But I don't even want to do that anyway. I had a man in Wilcox years ago after we got in church and singing. And he said, well, I'll tell you what, Shirley, I will sponsor you on the radio if you'll sing folk songs. <laughs> now that's innocent enough, you know, folk songs. I said, I can't do that. You know, that's what's wrong with a lot of people today. They think they can do this and that and still be okay with God. You know, it's like... A, I told it recently, I guess, the man that was hiring a, a driver to drive him across the country. So he went to this mountain and this mountain road and he told him, the first guy that came, he said, I want you to get as close to the edge of that road as you can without, you know, going over the cliff. So with that guy, I mean, he just got really close. And he come back and said, no, you're not going. The next one came and, and he was even having gravel falling off the edge. Come back, he said, no, 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 you're not going. The third guy came and he said, are you crazy, man? I'll stay as far away from that edge of that road as I can. He said, you're the man for the job. Right. <laughs> yeah. But we sometimes just want to, you know, just check it out. Just, just see how close. I don't think any of y'all do that. You know, after all, I do have seasoned people in here. But, you know, we can get caught up just like anybody else. Hallelujah. I could say some things. I'm going to stop right there. <laughs> Hallelujah. I could say more, but I'm not. I'm going to stop right there. Y'all know. Y'all know what you should be doing, what you shouldn't be doing. <laughs> Peter said, you're not redeemed with corruptible things. You're not redeemed with money, but with the precious blood of the Lord Amen. Jesus. What a price. What a price that He paid for us to be sitting here tonight. Redeemed. By His precious, precious blood. Ephesians, Paul says, in whom, speaking of Jesus, we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of His grace. For by grace are you saved through faith, not of, not of yourselves, not of works, lest any man should boast. I think I was hearing a, a preacher on TV Leave us where I heard it. I agree. You can't help yourself. You know, I thought I could help myself to get saved and, and Jesus to, you know, accept me. I couldn't. 
We can't save ourselves. We, I couldn't help myself. Just one touch of the Master's hand. Just one touch. Hallelujah. That revelation of who He is. And it, daylight and dark. You step from darkness into light. Translated, the Bible says, into the kingdom of His dear Son. And that night in 1958, in July of 1958, when Jesus revealed Himself in me and to me, I was as saved that night as I am tonight. Amen. You think about that. It doesn't take a lifetime. It's good. The Bible says it's good for a man to bear the yoke in his youth. That's good. But it doesn't always happen like that. But once we're saved, He forgets everything that's behind us. Thank you, Jesus. It's all wiped away. Thank you. I had a young man, uh, a couple called me. He was in the school. This man was teaching mechanical school. And he'd gone to see a little uh, Catholic boy and his wife, young couple. They'd gone to see the exorcist. And the boy was a basket case. He couldn't sleep. He had to leave the light on at night. So this man was trying to minister to him. Ralph, Buck, Ralph Buckles. Y'all remember Ralph and Linda. And so at midnight, they called me. Sister Kinsey, we've, we've done everything we know to do. Boy, he just can't seem to have peace. And I said, well, meet us at the church. So we go, was in El Mirage. We went to the church. And and so I find him, he's, he's I'm, you know, you got to ask Jesus to forgive you of your sins and all this. And ever, he was just going over and over. I said, wait, wait, wait. I stopped him. I said, just one time. I said, you don't have to name all your sins. And you don't have to keep asking him to forgive you. If you from your heart ask Jesus to forgive you, he's forgiven you. That's right. Amen. You don't have to keep doing that. And they started the church. They got in church. I can't remember how long they stayed in or what happened, but they did They did find Jesus. Hallelujah. And then he went on to say, in verse uh, 4, He crowned you with loving kindness and tender mercies. The psalmist said, If it had not been, for the Lord on our side, where would we be? And I've often thought of that. I only tasted one strong drink. I've tasted a beer. Didn't like it. It's like the first time I tried a cigarette. I was a teenager. I thought, dear Lord, how could anybody like this? <laughs> that was the end of that. Just before I got saved, we had a, this thing out in the Kansas settlement where we lived. It was like a nightclub. And they had a dance out there. And so Johnny and I were there. Well, I wasn't saved. And they mixed me a vodka drink. I wish I could have said I'd never had it in my mouth. I didn't taste it. It was tasteless. I, I don't think they put much in it because I was pretty young. I was old enough, I guess. Maybe, I don't know. But right at that time, Jesus brought me into the kingdom. Hallelujah. But what if He had not? Where would I end it up? It's so easy to be swayed into the way of the world. They make it look so good and so wonderful. And one little Mexican Spanish preacher came to Wilcox one time years ago and he said, you know in the world you have fun, but in Jesus you have joy. Yes. There's a vast difference. See, fun is temporal. Joy is eternal. Yes. There's going to be joy in heaven. Yes. When one sinner repents, there's joy in heaven. The angels rejoice and have a party. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Crown us with loving kindness and tender mercies. How many in this house tonight have ever had to have His loving kindness and His tender mercies in your life. I can raise my hand and say, thank God that He loved me enough not to slap me in the face or say, be gone with you, but He had mercy and tenderness and loving kindness. He comes to us and, and, and He deals with us and He embraces us. I've made so many mistakes in my life. Oh, if I could... I probably couldn't do it any better if I tried to pastor all over again, but 
you know, I realized that, that I wasn't the best pastor in the world, but I tell you one thing, I did the best job I knew how to do. Because you know, they just put you in the ministry. They don't give you any training. I, I took correspondence through the district and I didn't even know how to, hardly how to have a board meeting except I was on the board at Wilcox, so I kind of just followed that pattern. You know, that's all I knew to do. Never had done a funeral. So I, I, I was helping out a couple of funerals, brother, right before I had to do one by myself. You go to a funeral as a lay person, you don't pay attention to what the preacher does. You hear what he says and all that, you know, all that other stuff. The etiquette stuff, you know. Where am I supposed to stand at this time? What am I supposed to do? So while I was doing that and then helping, I watched everything he did. So I'd know how to conduct a funeral. But his loving kindness. Hallelujah. Helped us through. He helps us through whatever. Whatever. Yes, he does. You see, I've told people before, and sometimes when people start having problems, you know what the first thing they do? Anybody have a guess? They quit coming to church. And when you're having troubles, that's the place you need to be more than anywhere else. I had a lady, she come in, we were having choir practice at Lighthouse, and she come with her choir rub, I'm quitting choir, and because something was going on in her family, and, and I said, wait a minute. Give the body an opportunity to minister to you. So we gathered around her and we ministered to her and she didn't leave the church nor the choir. But he's loving. You know, yes, he's a God of judgment, but he's a God of loving kindness. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. He loves us when nobody else can. That's right. Uh, come on. Yeah. He loves us when everybody else around us can't love us. Or have to grit their teeth to love us. And Johnny, just keep your... <laughs> Psalm 118 says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good. It, because His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now say that His mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron now say that His mercy endures forever. Let them now that fear the Lord say... Say it with me. His mercy endureth forever. Hallelujah. Praise God. There's, you can't drain it. You can't drain His mercy. He gets grieved when we are not, not obedient to Him. When we walk out of the, the way we should be walking, He's grieved. But He still loves us. You know, I've told parents of little children, don't ever tell your kids if they do something wrong, God's not going to love them. Because He will love them. I remember, not particularly that, but when Carla, when Carissa was little, and, and I heard Carla say this more than once, when Carissa was doing something she didn't like, she said, now you've made me mad. So I took Carla aside. I said, Carla, that's not the way to correct her. Don't, don't tell her. You're correcting her because she's made you mad. You correct her because she's done something wrong. That was one time she took my advice. <laughs> you know, when you get so old, you become the child and they become the parent. Amen. Have y'all experienced that? <laughs> Mark, uh, Claudine says, no, no. I'm not going to do that. I just saw that look on your face, Claudine. Oh, Hallelujah. Psalm 63, Oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. Can we just set ourselves in this psalm and make this our prayer? My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. To see your power and your glory. So as I have seen you in the sanctuary, because your loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. We sing it. Thy loving kind. Sing it with me. Is better than life. Thy loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee. I will lift up my hands unto thy. Psalm 103 on 
down in that chapter, th verse 13, 13, like as a father pities his children, so the Lord pities them that fear him. For he knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust. His loving kindness. It's not his will. The Bible tells that he's not willing that anybody perish, but that all should come to repentance. And then lastly, I like this one. Who satisfies your mouth with good things. The psalmist said, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. I remember when our son was running from God and he came down to see us and we, we were at Lighthouse in its early stages at Desert Cove. And I preached on that. Taste and see. You know, just trying my best to penetrate his heart. Taste and see that the Lord is good. If you've never tried it, then you don't know what you're missing. It tastes like, remember that song we used to sing? Oh, it tastes like honey in the rock. Taste and see that the Lord is good. He satisfies our mouth with good things. Those things that, that we crave, that we crave. But when we come to Jesus and, and we allow Him to fulfill those cravings that we have. I'll probably die a pauper or at least not rich. But you know what? I'm one of the richest people on the face of the earth. I'm one of the richest people on the face of the earth. I told you Sunday night, I have nothing to bequeath to my children, really. We have a home that's not paid for. One time they were down in Wilcox and we were going through the house because we were, you know, put together a will and the lawyer said, let them go through the house and see what they want. And, you know, we'll write it down. My son-in-law, Richard, pipes up. He says, well, nobody wants their car because it's never paid for. <laughs> so we had our last car about 10 years and every time I saw Richard I'd say Richard my car is paid for <laughs> but one thing I'm glad that I've left them a heritage Johnny and I have of godliness Amen. Yes. Amen. loving God yes. knowing God I mean that's more important to me than all the monies because they go through money do you know kids go through your money they do they squandered it. They, don't, they didn't work for it. And so it goes, comes easily and it goes easily. It's a truth. It's a truth. The Bible says having food and raiment and honey, I like food. And raiment and I like clothes. Therewith, being content. There's so many discontented Christians these days. Do you know... We need to learn. Paul said, I have learned that whatever state I'm in, therewith to be content. Amen. Bow your heads. Linda, do you mind helping me out on the piano? Please. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus paid it all. I said, Jesus paid it all. We don't have to lack. If you're here, you need healing in your body. If you're here, you need forgiveness. You know, Christian sin, we talked about this yesterday morning. We don't make a practice of sinning. And I appreciated that because I'd always heard that, but I didn't know that Greek word could be translated that way. Because that's what I've always realized. We don't practice sin, you know, but uh, sometimes we do sin. But if we sin, we have an advocate with the Father. Amen. Amen. I mean, nobody. John said, if a man says he has no sin, he's a liar. Amen. Right. Come on. So whatever your, your need is tonight, whether it's to ask forgiveness, maybe you've hurt somebody. Maybe you've disobeyed one of God's commandments. See, I still believe in the Ten Commandments. And why is our nation where it's at? Because they've taken the Ten Commandments out of our courthouses. That's what all of our laws have been based on are the Ten Commandments. They don't get it. But whatever it might be tonight, 
If you need your sins washed away, <laughs> He's here. We sensed Him. We've worshipped Him. We're in His presence. I just want you to listen to that still small voice. <laughs> and just surrender. If you need healing, the blood, His blood was shed for our healing. Hallelujah. Would you stand together with me? Father, we just bow our, our heads and our hearts before you tonight, God. And I'm asking you in the name of Jesus yes, that you will make this so real to all of us, right. God. That we don't have to walk around with our heads bowed low. We don't have to walk around yes. in condemnation. But God, we can have liberty and freedom yes. because Jesus paid the price. God, touch us tonight. Yes. Draw us unto yourself by your Holy yes. Spirit. Yes. In Jesus' precious name. Hallelujah. Is there anyone here who just wants to come, whether it's for healing or maybe something you need to get right with God? Just come on down.